Yup, this is the life. No thoughts, head empty, just a uh, cute little puppy doing cute little puppy things. Such as liking this video and subscribing to the channel if you enjoy it. Yup, no way, no how can this ability go fast. I'm just gonna relax like an actual puppy for once and... Whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, when did Bond friends were wrapped by a weapon? It's so fast now, oh my god, I'm so scared, help me! Kirby Star Allies may not be the best game in the series, unless of course you think it is. That's way more important than what some YouTuber thinks. The jury's out if it's more important than what Puppy thinks though. Anyway, when it comes to speedrunning, it is an absolute treasure trove of a game. So many modes, so much variety, and so many abilities and characters. The Dream Friends are an absolute blast, easily one of the best things about the game. In the context of speedrunning, they are very good, with most of them either seeing use in at least one category, or bare minimum being exceptional, more so than the regular abilities. With strong juggernauts like Day to Day, Adeline, and Ribbon, it's not a joke by the way, they're actually one of the best, and the Mage Sisters for doing damage, as well as those that set new precedents for moving fast, like Meta Knight, Magalore, and the Mage Sisters, it should come as no surprise that they dominate everything. Right? Right? Don't get me wrong, most of the Dream Friends are insanely overpowered, but they're not the best. And I'm being serious, this isn't one of those the actual best are my pup trains on Patreon kind of deals. Although that is true, consider becoming one of my pup trains by checking out my Patreon in the description. You get neat perks, including early access to videos like this one. Special thanks go out to my head padding fluffle fan pup trains, Biohazard, Tyke, the serval that likes strawberry pop tarts, Lydia Scribe, and remember, Miss K says super duper thanks to my head padding fluffle fan pup trains, Biohazard, Tyke, the serval that. I love you all. But yeah, yeah, back on topic of all things actually, Bomb Kirby and Poppy Brothers Jr. by extension absolutely tear this game to shreds. So let's talk about why that is. First and foremost, I should note that Bomb, by itself, is actually one of the worst abilities in the game. I know how that sounds, but it's true. Bomb bowling is really your only way of dealing any kind of damage, and it's tolerable, but it's far from what I would call good, especially in the air. What makes Bomb so good is something that basically only applies to Star Allies. It's technically in Squeak Squad 2, but like, come on. Ability elements are a major game changer, probably even more than the Dream Friends. That said, this doesn't apply for Electric and Water, or as they're called in the game, Zap and Splash. These two are useless, D -d don't worry about those. A Blizzard Bomb isn't great either, as nice as that alliteration is, but you can find some use for it because it freezes enemies, which makes them go away faster compared to regularly killing them from the outside. The difference is that when you freeze their corpse, it just immediately goes on to the next enemy, whereas if you kill them, like I said before, normally, skips the process of watching their corpses ragdoll and eventually disintegrate. It's morbid, but it's curvy, so it's cute. The two real stars of the show here are Sizzle Bomb and Bluster Bomb. We did get a neat alliteration, and that's so good. To get the lesser of the two out of the way, Sizzle Bomb is only good, not great. The two main perks of it are that it deals more damage than Base Bomb, <laughs> and it leaves behind a trail of fire that lingers and deals extra damage. Basically, it goes all out on the damage, and that is really nice. And nothing wrong with being overkill in a game like Kirby, you know? Except for City Trial, you might want to tone the meanest down with the checklist missions next time. Please and thank you. But you're not here for any of this. I've been yakking and yapping for a while now without talking Bluster Bomb after I showed off that little teaser at the start. So let's talk about what makes it so ridiculous. For starters, the community has dubbed this trick Air Bomb Spam, as that is not only a very good description of what's going on, but you can abbreviate it to be ABS. Or, you know, abs. You can unironically say things like, Wow, look at Kirby's abs! Those are the, that's the bestest abs I've ever seen! And completely mean it in the context of speedrunning. We're a very silly group when you get right down to it. But the actual trick for good abs, believe it or not, is very simple. Let's use our favorite tree, Wispy Woods, as an example. He's looking a little inverted and glowy, but I'm sure that's just radiation harming nature. Another thing we haven't fixed in Planet Robobot. <laughs> anyway, 
When you use Bluster Bomb, one of the fun quirks is that it gets the ability to float when you pull out a bomb in the air. If this happens to hit an enemy, thrown or not, it will explode, dealing damage. The exact numbers aren't nearly as important as how quickly you can pull another bomb out. It, 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 it's, it's immediately. Seriously, there's like next to no delay between the bomb exploding and Kirby taking out another one. I ask where they get all the bombs from, but honestly, it's pretty impressive that Kirby can take them out that fast to begin with. It must be their strong abs. With this info in mind, it's pretty clear what's going on. We run up to a boss, jump, take out a bomb, let it immediately explode, rinse, repeat. Learning the timing for this is very, very hard, unless you have the actual knowledge of what's going on. And when you do, it's actually fairly easy to get right, at least for the timing. Just think of it as Kirby taking out a bomb and the bomb exploding, rinse, repeat from there. Granted, it will take some practice before you do it super duper fast, and the positioning for it is really hard since it depends on every boss fight, but there's nothing wrong with that. Practice makes perfect after all. You can even do this against shorter bosses who don't float around, like Mr. Frosty and Mennonite. Most, if not all, bosses have a tendency to jump around a lot in this game, and when they do that, they're in the perfect position to be hit. You can plant some bombs in advance if need be, but otherwise, simply wait for them to jump and go to town. Realistically, the only true exception to this would be somebody like Morphonite, since hitting him usually makes him teleport, or Goldon and Silvox, since they're really never in the air at all. For Morphonite, it's really only matters for Phase 1, Phase 2. You get that huge sword thing, which he's in the air the whole time for. The one time that I actually got to Morphonite in my recording for this, I almost did it. I messed up at the very end, but I actually almost had him. More importantly than that fact, though, when people run, they will typically do it with either Rickkind and Koo, which is what I did for the footage, it's frankly easier, or Magalore, Magalore again, and the Mage Sisters. You get both Bluster Bomb and Sizzle Bomb from this, so if you ever come across a boss that you really don't feel comfortable using Bluster Bomb for, or it's just not viable, you can use Sizzle Bomb and still get insanely fast times. I'm mostly thinking, again, Morphonite, Meta Knight, Goldon and Silvox, Twin Bugsy, Twin Bonkers. You'd definitely rather use Bluster Bomb, but again, you can't, so Sizzle Bomb is excellent for these. And sure, I'm talking a lot about the ultimate choice here. I, if you've been looking at this footage, you know how much it wrecks the ultimate choice. But wouldn't it be too slow for an any percent run or a hundo, heroes in another dimension, guest star allies? I only recorded any percent for this, sorry. The good news is, it doesn't matter. Since you can force enemies to become your friends, although it's not violent, so it's fine, you can simply piggyback on them when needed. Wing serves you good for the first half of the game with Bluster Bomb being used as needed, but once you unlock Meta Knight, the whole game is basically over. Just use Sizzle Shuttle Loop to move through the levels, Bluster Bomb to clear out bosses, and... I don't know, have two filler friends in there, maybe make one of them fire so that you can use Sizzle Bomb if it ever comes down to that. I don't know. And that's Bluster Bomb for ya! For some fun history, before this was discovered, Blizzard Day-to-Day -Day was actually considered the best ability for the ultimate choice. The updated Dream Friends hadn't power crept their way into our hearts yet, Bluster Bomb wasn't discovered at all, and Hammer was still the dominant number one ability in all three of the prior games. Funny how poorly that's aged. Day to Day himself had the longest reach of the hammer users, and Blizzard specifically had the strongest hammer flip, so it just kind of all added up. Bluster Mennonite was on his way to overthrowing Day to Day, and world records were kind of being traded between the two, but after that they got Bluster bombed into obscurity. <laughs> uh, you hate to see it if you're a Day to Day or Mennonite fan. You love to see it if you like Bomb, I don't know, I don't judge. You do you. Well, now that the video's over, I'm not judging anyway. I've got more stuff to work on. So, until I see all of you wonderful, wonderful people again, I've been Claire. Thank you all so very much for watching, and I'll see you around. Bye bye!